David Frost slams the European Union as Brussels are to take the UK to court and Liz Truss takes over the world with her trade deals. Before we start today's program, as you know, this lockdown has been hitting everyone, especially small British businesses. A while ago, I gave a shout out to one of these businesses, Fresh Essential, a couple of English guys in the country who have a really cool company. They provide food to high-end hotels and restaurants, but obviously hospitality is down, so they decided to go directly to consumers. Now, this is not a paid ad, I'm not getting anything out of it, but the last time I gave a shout out to them, thanks to you guys, not only they survived, but they've also added new products and recipes on their website. So, they got in touch with me again, they sent me more dried mango, fire roasted nut, and everything else here. One thing they've added is a new breakfast kit. It's a new breakfast box, which is a one-stop shop, and the quality is world-class. Now, they've given me a new discount code, Maya10, and you guys were absolutely amazing last time. So if you, once again, want to support a small British business, if you want to support Fresh Essential and benefit from their brilliant products, then definitely check out the link in the description and use the code Maya10, and together, let's survive this lockdown. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, program. The European Union are sulking, and they've come out to say that we don't sulk. David Frost, the former chief negotiator for the United Kingdom and the current member of Boris Johnson's cabinet, has decided to write an article today uh, to talk about how the European Union uh, are not actually being honest and they're not being good partners. Clearly, they're not used to this new relationship, this new Brexit Britain, a new sovereign and independent country. That's why they're all kicking off when it comes to fisheries, when it comes to Northern Ireland, and uh, the UK government are taking all these measures to ensure that the integrity of the United Kingdom is protected. Now, Brussels are going to take us to court. Now, we're also going to talk about this so-called court in this video as well. But let's talk about what's been happening. The independent, you know, the so-called independent independent uh, has actually written this uh, post uh, talking about how uh, officials in the European Union have said that we never sulk. This is their response to Lord Frost's article today uh, saying that, you know, the, the European Union needs to actually be more mature and be grown up and deal with the United Kingdom as they should do uh, with any independent and sovereign country. And Lord Frost has also said that if Westminster you know, again, the independence, the way they've written it, they're saying that London's second threat to breach the terms of the Brexit deal, uh, which Mr. Johnson signed with Brussels, uh, David Frost says that this is lawful. Now, again, this is independence language for saying that, oh, we're breaching, we're breaking all the rules. In reality, again, we have this situation where the Brexit trade deal has not even been ratified by the European Union. And a lot of these uh, parts of this uh, deal um, this is never supposed to be a permanent thing in the sense that you can never change anything. You know, both sides could always come back to the table, renegotiate certain aspects, especially the Northern Ireland Protocol. Now, the European Union don't actually understand this. They're going to take us to court. Now, this court is an interesting one. It's not a real court. It's the European Court of Justice. Why? Why, why do we have to still deal with that? Why can't they actually have a, a really independent referee? So why can't we deal with the World Trade Organization? Be in the middle between the UK and the European Union. Why do we have to deal with the European Union's court? Why can't we take the EU to our own Supreme Court, for example? It's all a bit of a mess at this point. And you have a situation where officials in Brussels don't understand why the UK want to protect the UK. And uh, on the other hand, some of the remainders that we have in this country are taking the European Union side. Gavin Barwell who was the former chief of staff to Theresa May when she was prime minister. He was part of the team that gave us the backstop plan, which was even worse than the current Northern Ireland protocol, is now taking the EU side, saying that David Frost's article and Boris Johnson's move uh, to protect the UK and keep Northern Ireland inside the UK is a bad idea. Why? What's the point? So firstly, Gavin uh, Barwell is now in the House of Lords, another addition to the House of Lords, that's another problem, uh, but he's saying that the problems which had led to products missing from supermarkets, shelves and lorries returning empty to Northern Ireland were caused by the deal agreed by Boris Johnson, which was very different from the one Theresa May negotiated. Yes, it is different. It's slightly better. It's not the best, but Theresa's deal was worse. 
I don't understand why he's now defending through his mate's backstop. Imagine if we were in that situation. It would have been a complete mess. And uh, Boris Johnson has now come out to say that, you know, well, again, according to the government themselves, saying that we are ready. If the EU want to take us to court, they can. But on the other hand, they just need to be more mature about this whole situation. You have Gavin Barwell kicking off. You have European Commission uh, members kicking off. One of the spokes... Uh, uh, people, uh, Eric uh, Marmer has uh, said that, you know, these accusations that Lord Frost is making is absolutely ridiculous. We never sulk. We don't have moods. <laughs> we are an institution. We are robots. We're not human. We don't have emotions. <laughs> and uh, so we try to work on a day-to-day -day basis with a very, very even temper. Even the way they've written it, the way he was actually given this uh, statement, it sounds like someone who's actually quite angry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't sulk. I'm very, very even tempered. So uh, this this is the spokesperson for the European Commission who clearly say that the European Union are not human, they're robots. And uh, then you have uh, the former chief of uh, the Brexit department, uh, Philip Rycroft, who's also said that it's deeply worrying and frankly deeply depressing that with the ink barely dry on the protocol and on the trade and cooperation agreement, and we're already running into these sorts of problems. Brexit is far from being done. And it's going to be with us for a long time to come. Well, firstly, Brexit as a concept, hopefully it's permanent. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd rather keep this country independent forever. Secondly, these people are again kicking off about this uh, new arrangement. We knew this Brexit trade deal is going to cause some issues. It's still better than the first deal, isn't it? And uh, all the other options that these people, the civil servants, people like Gavin Barwell, the European Commission offered, it was much worse than this. It was basically the European U UK being a member of the EU without being a member of the EU. So, on the plus side, we have Lord Frost and Liz Truss on our side. Liz Truss, the best cabinet minister that we currently have. I know some of you are going to say Rishi Sunak, but no, it's Liz Truss. She's been absolutely amazing with signing new trade deals with countries. She's also focusing on Commonwealth. She's focusing on Kanzuk, this new arrangement between Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and the UK. And now she's going to the Caribbean. There's a trade zone uh, which is uh, actually the value is 3.2 billion pounds with 14 nations in that area and the department for international trade is now focusing on that this is actually really good because we're now looking to strengthen the, our trade ties with the caribbean community uh, countries or cari forum uh, who are basically include uh, jamaica barbados and all the other nations in that area and yes 3.2 billion pounds uh, this was actually worth uh, last year and this is clearly going to increase, especially with the roaring 20s coming in after the lockdown. And if you have a proper free trade agreement, this will definitely help. Now, this economic partnership agreement provides duty-free and quota-free access to the United Kingdom from the Caribbean, allowing goods such as bananas and rum to be exported. I know these might seem trivial to a lot of people. Just look at, and this that was the problem for the Euro um, European Union and Remainers. When we were talking about certain specific goods and areas it's not really just about bananas or even rum it's about the whole concept of now being a global country and cooperating whilst at the same time protecting your own nation so you don't have to be a globalist in the sense that you don't really respect your own country you could still be internationalist have free trade deals but be patriotic and protect your own nation now this government has not been perfect you know that the opposition how are they doing? Are they offering us any alternatives? No, the opposition, the Majesty's loyal opposition, are joining TikTok. <laughs> I don't know. How to, okay, this is a serious story, by the way. Sakia Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party, has now urged all the Labour MPs to join TikTok <laughs> that's owned by China. China. Because there are some weirdos creating fake accounts pretending to be Labour MPs on TikTok. Firstly, who are these losers? who are creating fake accounts pretending to be socialists. Secondly, is this really the best way to deal with it? Do you really have to join TikTok? Firstly, delete TikTok from your phones because it's linked to the CCP. Secondly, just release a statement, public statement, press release, say that the Labour Party and its MPs don't do TikTok. So if you see anyone on TikTok, it's not us. But Starmer's tactic is, no, no, we should get most of our MPs to join. And that way we could tackle this problem. What is happening to our politics and Westminster? 
Speaking of Westminster, today's a big day. Today's the Commonwealth Day. And this is a photo that we have. Someone tweeted this earlier. Uh, this is uh, near the Buckingham Palace. No flags. I understand we're going through a lockdown. I understand the country is basically shut down at this point. But governments are still running. The institutions are still running. Politicians are running around. You know, Matt Hancock is running around in the parks. Why can't they just put up some flags? Commonwealth flags. You know, where are the flags? Every year, we actually celebrate this uh, important day, Commonwealth. Clearly, they completely forgot about this. Complacency right now in the civil service, in the establishment, Downing Street and uh, Cabinet Office, is astonishing. Right now, they're too focused. You've got the Labour Party obsessed with TikTok. The other guys are talking about how to deal with the nurses striking. They can't even have a mature debate about our healthcare system because of the 1% pay rise. And on the one hand, if you really want to have a proper debate about the NHS and how, firstly, it's a mess, and if you really care about nurses and doctors and professionals, then you need to reform the NHS. Also, if you really care about their pay, look at the managers. Look, oh, first, look, look what they're hiring. So you've got the equality, diversity, and inclusion um, lead for some reason, and you could get up to almost £60,000 a year. Then you have the head of inclusion and engagement, whatever that is, you could actually get, if this figure is actually correct, I, I don't know if I'm reading this right or not, but uh, yeah, it says 62,000 pounds. This is serious, apparently. And then you've got the inclusion support officer, who's also, you know, 36, almost 37,000 pounds that you could actually get. Why do we have these roles advertised? And why are they so expensive? Seriously, <laughs> I wish I could make that much money being, just being part of the public sector. But this is what the um, healthcare system is in the United Kingdom, if you were watching this from abroad. It's a bit of a mess. So this is what we have for you guys today. 8 p.m. we're going to uh, upload our announcement. Me and Lacey that we have. You've already, if you've seen the uh, live stream, you probably know because we have launched Discord. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Discord is, wait until 8 p.m. and watch that. And uh, thanks again for watching. Um, what we're going to do actually, we're going to have another announcement soon because uh, we have added more perks and benefits to the membership of our channel. If you remember, uh, if you have uh, been part of a, a higher tiers of membership, activist or special advisor, it's time for you to either downgrade it or rejoin because we've removed those tiers. We're going to have one tier for everyone um, so that you know you don't, you don't pay too much. Uh, we actually decrease the prices now, uh, but we also added more. So we're going to have an announcement on the newsletter because we're adding a news, new newsletter as a feature as well, uh, which will run every Sunday. So stay tuned. Thanks again for watching. I'm Maya TC. And I'll see you guys in the next video.